I think the one thing we haven't covered at all is adenovirus. What are your thoughts on adenovirus? So um, a preliminary part of my study was um, taking swabs and testing wild bearded dragons for adenovirus. And so of the 27 animals that we sampled, 29% of them, a third of them, had adenovirus. We were doing bloods on them, and all the bloods were all perfectly normal. Then the adenovirus that they were carrying was typed, and they looked back at it. Um, you know, the guy that did it, he's, um, you know, knows all that stuff, but he traced it back that these animals, the adenovirus that they had was closely related to the Gila monster adenovirus. Wow. And that virus has been in them and evolving with the bearded dragon since they're split with the Gila monster. So they're the natural host of adenovirus. So wild animals naturally have adenovirus and they've had it for millennia and it's been evolving with them. They're the natural host. But why is it causing such a problem if they're the natural host? And we've got to look at it from clinically. I've had problems, owners, animals always sick, tested it, had adenovirus, and then we corrected their husbandry. They never had a problem again. They're carrying this virus and it only gets out of control when they're, Im they're immunosuppressed. The husbandry is not correct. Yeah, sure, you've got your weaker individuals that are going to succumb to it early on. But if we look at, you know, when these animals are succumbing, juveniles are quite predisposed to having problems with adenovirus. And this is a typical age for when animals are stressed. It's like young kids always sick. Young, any young animal is when it's going to get stressed and sick. And it's just what they're carrying. And, you know, the way bearded dragons are bred, stick them all in a bucket. You know, they're all competing for food. They've got to stack up on top of each other for heat. So they're super stressed. Most of them um, start shedding coccidia. Then there's a high coccidia load, so they've all got that. So there's extra stress there. And then they move off to their new home, to a new keeper who doesn't know how to keep bearded dragons and wants to hold them all day. That's extra stress. And then they fold. Then they rock up to the vet and the vet goes, then they want to get tested before a denovirus. Of course, it's going to have a denovirus. It's had it, but is that the main problem? It hasn't been the main problem. It's had so many stresses on it, on it in that early stage, on top of it being a young juvenile, that um, is what predisposes it to come down and, you know, have problems secondary to that. Um, at the big eye care conference, um, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, they had Mark Mitchell, a US vet, and Rachel Marshang, who's in Germany, and she does a lot of testing on adenovirus. Mark Mitchell, he is in the US, and they were going to do a study on adenovirus in captive dragons. And they went to a large commercial um, facility and 80% of the dragons that were being supplied to the pet shops in the US had adenovirus because of the way they keep them. They keep them all close and confined. Uh, and then, then Rachel Marshing in Germany said in Europe they tested it and it was a lot lower. But it was just the way because people buy bearded dragons from other breeders and not from commercial pet shops where they produce in thousands. So, you know, in some ways, you know, They've always had it. We're only detecting it more because we've got the technology to do it a lot cheaper and easier. And vets know about it now. But prior to this, just as many bat bearded dragons probably had the dinovirus. And from my clinical experience, they don't come in and they're not just sick from a dinovirus. They're sick because the husbandry is poor. And that's allowed the adenovirus to take a hold and cause more problems and comorbidities, oxidia, 
overcorrected pinworms, flagellates, stuff like that. Does Adenovirus have any benefit to bearded dragons like pinworm might do? Or is it completely just a negative on them? Nothing that I can think of. I think they're just like any other virus, just taking advantage, trying to survive. Um, you know, that's that's it really. And, you know, I guess the wild dragons have the benefit in that the stronger they are and they breed and they breed strong offspring, captivity-wise, someone wants to breed their in, already inbred leatherback slash um, silkback that already has a poor immune system or um, they're breeding closely related siblings or zeros and stuff like that so their immune systems are already poor so a smaller amount of poor husbandry is just gonna cause that animal to um, fold quite quickly so do you think people who have they know it's test positive for adenovirus do you think they should just not breed is that a responsible thing to do or is it everything's got it now so it's um i would say it's it's more just i would have no problem me personally if my kid wanted a bearded dragon i would buy it from someone whether it had a adenovirus or not because i know i would get the husbandry right which is the main thing that's going to cause the problem it's a good marketing ploy to go, you know what, I've got their adenovirus free, then possibly you could allow the immune system to be, you could allow the husbandry to be a bit poorer if they didn't have adenovirus, weren't carriers. That's it, really. But I have no problem, um, you know, a study in Australia, the guy that does the tests in Australia, 50% of the animals and 50% of the collections that he tested were positive for adenovirus. It's like cold sores in humans. You know, it's a very good analogy. A large yeah. population have it. It's not until you get stressed that it becomes a problem. Yeah. So, you know, if it is good to try and breed these virus free things, but, you know, everything would almost have a virus. You just got to be able to detect it. <laughs> you know, someone be able to detect it. So. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Beardivet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Beardivet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.